stop eating them. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Inappropriate Movie Database, the comedy game show about content warnings. I'm your host, Nick Martucci. I am so excited for this episode. It's going to be a fun one. Before we get to that, if you're new here or if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, Now would be a great time to go over there and join. If you search Inappropriate Movie Database or click the link in the description of this video, uh, that's the the community of this show. That's where I book the show for the most part. So if you want to be a part of this, I love having new people on the show. Uh, That's going to happen tonight. More on that in a bit. Uh, Please go over there. There's a sign-up sheet. I'm still uh, booking for the rest of August. There's still a couple of spaces left, so... Right at the top of that page, you'll see a a post that says August booking. Look at that. See if you want to be a part. If you do, reach out to me there. Or if you're not on Facebook, if you're you're better than me, uh, try Twitter or Instagram at IMDB game. We're there too. Uh, That's that's another place you can reach out. Uh, Like I said, I love love bringing new people into the show. Uh, We've been doing it now for, for way too long and it's great that it keeps going. Tonight, is going to be a, 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 a fun show um, with a topic that I still feel like I have to over explain more than I probably need to. Uh, tonight on the show, we are doing movies with places in the title. Any sort of proper place, country, city, streets, uh, restaurants, theme parks. Uh, basically, if you can go to there and it has a name, it is, uh, it, it, it's in the mix for tonight. Uh, and I feel like if you think too much about it, it will make the game harder for you. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens. I think it's time to bring in the wonderful group of people I have tonight. Joining me on the show are Casey McNeil, Josh Pick, Mike Giordano, and Zach Jones. Hey, everybody. Hey! <laughs> Let's start I just, off I, with... I, uh, just told, I just detected a Canadian accent in your voice for the first time. Is that in, in in whose voice? My voice? Your voice. Was uh, that no. imagining that? Uh, I here here's Wait, the I'll thing. We'll, in a boat. I think Nick's just very polite. Do you say out, out, <laughs> you say out and about in a boat, or do you say out in a boot in a boot? Uh <laughs> Here, here's the thing, and we'll get into the uh, we'll get into the game uh, briefly. Uh, <laughs> let, let's let's do the brief thing. When I was a kid, I had a strong Boston accent and also like a lisp, so they sent me to speech therapy uh, to kind of get rid of the lisp. But they also tried to get rid of the Boston accent, so now I have a weird mix where. If you're from Boston, you don't notice my accent. If you're from anywhere else, you hear the Boston accent. Um, so it's just like a mess of however I think words are supposed to be pronounced. Why don't you just say your speech therapist was Canadian? Because it's, <laughs> that, that's what happened. Uh, well, let's start off uh, with a with, uh, first-time guest on the show, because he already jumped in. Casey McNeil. Welcome. Hey. Comedian, hey. actor. Uh, just a wonderful, funny, funny person. Long overdue. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. I watched the show and I was like so, so enamored. I just couldn't wait to get on. Like, this is going to be fun. I like trivia. Now, I hope I don't yeah. make fool myself, though. I'll be eating these words later. Josh was on like, sharpening, his, sharpening his pencil. I mean, you were on the show tonight with... with the most frequent guest with two people who are very good at the show and with the person who has the lowest score of all time. So this could go in any direction. And one of the, the top 10 high scores too. That's true. <laughs> Once. Uh, did that. And I will say, uh, I, I mentioned acting at the top. I looked at your IMDB page, hoping to find a movie there that could fit this topic. Oh. And uh, was out of luck uh, because yeah. Boston Strangler isn't out yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Because <laughs> well, if you want to go on that technicality, I suppose you're right. <laughs> yes, I look well, back. A... And I think. Yeah, none of them are places, are they? About there's like 10, 10, uh, 10 out there. I think they're none, no places at all. Yeah, you've got a, a pretty impressive collection of movies on that. Yeah, you might recognize me from nothing because I'm. A, um, <laughs> I'm a background guy, so I'm meant to blend in, and I'm very good at what I do, so you won't know me. 
Well, Casey, you, you watched at least one episode. Uh, on all of these episodes, I always ask my guests if they can suggest a movie to people that sort of fits into the theme of this show. It doesn't have to be your favorite, just a movie that you really enjoy that you think people should watch. Uh, the, oh, that I enjoy I think people should watch? Well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but I was going to say Last Tango in Paris. That recently came up on the show in, uh, I believe, Sexual Awakening movies? <laughs> Which is <laughs> it is. At least uh, it was for me because I was like 13 or some kind of shit when I came. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Last tango it's really Paris. awakening when you learn about what the director did and said. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a movie to uh to to Google if you don't want to feel feel good about some some great actors. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, Casey, welcome to the show. Good luck tonight. I feel like you're gonna do great. Um, returning to the show, it's been it's been so long. It's been I think three days since he's been on the show. <laughs> Or was it last week? I have such a hard time with... Anyway, returning champion, Zach Jones back on the show. Hey, Zach. Oh, yes, I was here a week ago. I was not... A week ago. You weren't on Monday. No. No, as soon as I was saying it, I'm like, no, that's... That that can't be right. But Mm -hmm. you you won your last episode. You're back here defending your your, your title. How are you feeling about that? Um, I'm feeling pretty okay. I mean... You know, all I have to lose is my pride, so I don't have, you know. <laughs> then you'll be fine. Yeah, what a, yeah. <laughs> I don't have any of that. Uh, well, Zach, can you recommend a movie with a place in the title that maybe doesn't have uh, the history of a different movie? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? I, I the, This is, I'm, I'm starting a bad trend because the first one... <laughs> The one that came to mind that I think is an awesome movie with a with a uh, proper name in the title uh, is Chinatown. Who directed it? <laughs> we can't say. Yeah, the, who knows? The person, as far who, as I know, that movie doesn't have a director. Yeah the 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 director of the film was lost to the sands of time. But other than that, it's just a really cool uh, <laughs> LA noir movie. That is that is very true. I haven't seen it. Roman uh, Polanski. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Josh, Josh yeah, you're not coming in clearly. Can you uh, adjust the Zach, microphone? The <laughs> well, Zach, welcome back to the show. Um, also returning to the show, it actually has been too long. I look back, it's been, I think, 50 episodes around since his last appearance. Mike Giordano back on the show. Hey, Mike. Hey. hey. I, yeah, I like I, I like the uh, the background is fitting. Yeah, I just I googled places and uh, and then this was the first thing that came up. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've just been sitting here uh, trying to list out the movies that I know that have places in the name. So yeah, before got... we went live, you said you were thinking of one. Have you yeah. come up with more than one? Yeah, I've got Last Tango in Paris and <laughs> Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was uh, thinking about uh, you know just we'll we'll stick with the uh, with the theme here and go with Manhattan. It's another uh, directorless picture. Um, <laughs> yeah, very much uh, it's, a it's character in the film. You know. <laughs> Um, oh my god well at least we're all naming movies that aren't gonna come up tonight (laughs) good good. woody (laughs) allen (laughs) that's the one you can't think of is a woody allen i don't i don't know who she is (laughs) (laughs) oh i'm asking i'm actually asking (laughs) well welcome back thank you finally returning to the show as he does often uh yeah. really making sure that the the other frequent josh doesn't uh get the record for his no. 37th appearance on this show Poor josh, you'll hey. never have this <laughs> you two are real close now i think you're you're off by maybe three ep- yeah i think this episodes. one gets me an extra yeah yeah well, fuck off buddy <laughs> well it's good to see you too josh how you feeling not you <laughs> i'm great <laughs> Best best mood I've been in in a long time, Nick. 
I am so happy to hear that, Josh. That's not true. I'm I'm so sad. You didn't have to tell me that. Well, then and I. Well, Josh, uh, I'll I'll ask you the question and see if maybe we could not continue this trend. Yeah. Uh, do you have a movie that you like that fits the this town? Theme? That's fine. Uh, no, it doesn't uh, fit the theme. Yeah. Uh, you know what they're talking about Boston, and you know they're talking about Boston. That counts. A Charlestown. Don't be pedantic. No, no, not in my head. It's not. That movie uh, features a bank robbery in Harvard Square. It. Yeah. And uh, seems like the worst place for a getaway vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Pro- probably. I don't know, all, maybe all, all, no, only, only bested by the other scene, which is a, a bank robbery in the North End. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The streets love cars. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off, Josh. It doesn't matter. So you're going to stick with the town or you're going to choose something else? Raised in Arizona. That's perfect. And that is a wonderful movie. No, I'm talking about a documentary about the USS Arizona and their efforts to (laughs) get it from the bottom of the ocean floor there. It wasn't very deep. You can still see it, but I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. I laughed. I think it was fine. setting the tone. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like we're, we're, we're in for a weird one tonight. Uh, well, thank you all for being here. Uh, most of you know how this show works. I think all of you kind of know how this show works. If this is your first time watching, here's what's going to happen tonight. I have gone to IMDb, the Internet Movie Database, and I have pulled parental warnings for a bunch of movies with places in the titles. Uh, these parental warnings, I don't write them. I don't know who writes them. I'll never know who writes them. They're anonymous weirdos and none of them will reach out to me. Uh, They are my favorite people. I love that they do this for whatever reason they do it. Uh, I've compiled these warnings. I'm going to read them out. My friends here are going to try to figure out what movie these warnings are from. And unless there's anything else that we want to get to up top, I think it's time to jump into the game and to do that. Casey, I'm going to go to you first and ask a question of you. Would you like a movie from 1987, 1993, or 2001? Well, I'll take 87. 87. All right. First movie of the night from 1987 for five points under the category of sex and nudity. Three women talk about penis size. Three women talk about penis size. All right, Mike, what do you think this movie is? Uh, The Witches of Eastwick. Well, we are off to a great start. This movie is The Witches of Eastwick. Eastwick. Wow. You know what's frustrating is I was just talking about that with my roommate maybe 20 <laughs> minutes ago. Damn. <laughs> but I wasn't sure. I thought it, wow. I didn't think that was the I, year. I thought, but... I, I thought the old man was a shoe in for 1980. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, I'd fucking, I'd, be, I'd bust you all on this. You see, that was oh. the year I was born. So I was just, <laughs> ah, I see. that movie we also are... ruined cherries for me for a good <laughs> four years. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to end this game early tonight. Uh, just to finish that up, the other other uh, warnings in Witches of Eastwick under frightening and intense scenes, the snake scene may frighten people who don't like snakes. <laughs> Sex and nudity, a man says, quote, I always like a little pussy after lunch. He then has sex with a woman off screen. Violence and gore, two characters suffer severe projectile vomit induced by magic. <laughs> And frightening and intense scenes at the very end, the three women make a voodoo doll of Daryl. He flies around town and vomits in the church. He angrily drives back home and turns into a giant monster. Well, Mike is pulled out to the lead with five points before anybody else can buzz in. I have to know what role, the what what priority, when you're, lo- when you're looking these up, Nick, mm-hmm. what priority does the... Does reading the review take over thinking up the name of the movie? Like, do you do you go with the name of the movie, or do you sort of like think maybe this movie, and then you look at the reviews and go, "Oh yeah, I got to do it." Oh yeah, no, absolutely. At this point, I have a list of movies to look into, and then go through all of the the warnings that they have, 
and try to see if I can pull five that will, uh, that will give it away. Me. I get it. Um, a lot of but work. what a great start. Yeah, Josh, right. you get to pick the second. Oh, go ahead. No, I said, yeah, way to go, Mike. <laughs> uh, Josh, do you? That's all I needed. Josh, do you want a movie also from 1987 or 1996 or 2012? Whoa. Go back to 87. All right. Let's just do all 87 movies. Today. Yeah. Last year I was happy. You know, really impressed. <laughs> all right. Also in 1987 for five points under the category of sex and nudity. Three scenes involve showing covers of Playboy in Jugs magazines. <laughs> Josh has a guess. Anybody else? Josh, what do you think? Just because I don't think it's going to come up, and I think it came out around this year, the Philadelphia Experiment. <laughs> That's a fun guess. It is not the Philadelphia Experiment. I, I know that, but it's, it's a really, <laughs> it's not a good movie either. Uh, for four points, also under sex and nudity, dialogue about infertility, wife swapping, menstruating, and other similar topics. Did anyone guess the witches of Eastwick yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, for three points under violence and gore, a man blows up an innocent rabbit with a grenade. He then later shoots a lizard and sets a yellow flower on fire. That sounds like Caddy. Oh. What? Is it 87? <laughs> it sounds, it, I, I'm Oop, 87. Right. Casey's got to guess anybody else. Casey, what do you think this movie is? Uh, Caddyshack 2? I don't know. Is that... It is not Caddyshack 2. <laughs> Is that Caddyshack a place? I don't know. Is it Caddyshack? I wouldn't count it because I don't think it's called. What's the name of the golf course in that movie? I'm not going to be able to pull it. Oh, I wouldn't remember. Um, for two points under violence and gore, a man beats another man. Mild blood is shown. A man on a motorcycle is blown up by grenades. This is implied, but by, but a smoking boot is seen falling to the ground. Several armed robbery scenes are shown throughout the film. Oh. Mike has a guess. Anybody else? Sure. Josh is also going to guess. Josh, what do you think this movie is? I don't remember what this movie is about or when it came out leaving Las Vegas. Mike, what do you think? You're muted. Raising Arizona. <laughs> It is not leaving Las Vegas. It's uh, Raising Arizona, isn't it? It's a movie that Josh I know has yeah. seen. It is yeah. Raising Arizona. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it, but I wanted to. Oh, well. Yeah, that, that dude's awesome that plays the, that plays the guy that chases him. Oh, it's so fun. Out of the motorcycle. What the hell is his name? He's, he's a great actor. Uh. Yeah, that just so happened that this movie was was next up in the shuffle of movies, and Josh yeah. picked it. And yeah. uh... that's that's my name. You know, I don't know why I'm uh, just second guessing myself on everything so far tonight when I've I've known both of these movies. <laughs> Tell you what uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be here. I'm just gonna go drink some cough syrup because <laughs> fuck it. Uh, Live my I'm life. Fluent. Final clue in that under frightening and intense scenes, car chases. Two men are escaping from jail. They are seen emerging from a mud <laughs> during a stormy night screaming. A bank oh. robber orders bank customers to lie down on the ground. A baby is left behind when the adults leave and they are frantic when returning to find it. A man riding a motorcycle is chasing a woman who holds a baby in her hands. Just a whole lot of information in that one. <laughs> Morning. Not really. Mike, happens. Mike is at seven. Yeah. Zach is at zero. Case uh, is at negative one. Josh is at negative two. Yeah, well, who gives a shit, man? <laughs> uh, Mike, would you like a movie from 1998, 2005, or 2014? Let's go with 1998. 1998. Cider House is a proper noun. <laughs> <laughs> From 1998 for five points under sex and nudity. 
A girl wears a costume, and another girl comments that it's not that short. Oh. Oh, wait, that's not a proper noun. Okay. For four points under sex and nudity, several couples have sex inside their cars. Nothing is shown, but you hear moaning, etc. It's strongly implied that they're having sex and is a main point to the show, as well as a girl in her bra. Nineteen ninety eight. Yep. For three points under violence and gore, a mob forms at the diner, and a young man throws a rock through Mister Johnson's full window painting. Another does the same, and then several men throw a park bench through a window. Oh. The mob then breaks into the diner and ransacks the place. Later, the mob also burns many books. I feel like. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh man. You think you might get it? No. <laughs> All right. But I'm Mike, feel what do you think this minute. movie is? Pleasantville. It yeah. is Pleasantville. Yeah. Is that? Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Just cleaning up at this game tonight. Uh, also, also. Also in Pleasantville, under alcohol, drugs, and smoking, Reese Witherspoon's character lights a cigarette, inhales, and exhales one time, and then gives it to her friend who holds but not smokes it while Reese's character chats with a boy. And violence and gore, one boy punches another boy who is harassing a woman. He falls to the ground with a bloody lip, which is especially visible because the blood is red <laughs> and everything else in the scene is black and white. <laughs> Well, Mike's at 10. Everybody else stays the same. Zach. I'm just glad I didn't go down again. <laughs> Zach, would you like a movie from 1973, 1993, or 1996? You're muted, Zach. You are muted. <laughs> 96. 96. Okay, 1996 for five points. Also under sex and nudity. There's a lot of this tonight. A man's lust for a woman is a large theme in the movie. What year? 96. Uh, no, that's not a large part of that movie at all. all right, <laughs> for four points under violence and gore. Hold on, Zach, you have a guess? Yes. What uh, do you think? It's uh, Don't Be a Menace in South Central while you're drinking <laughs> juice in the hood. It is not Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drink, drinking your juice in the hood. For four points under violence and gore, a battle between the peasants and the soldiers, no one is shown getting killed. 96. Braveheart. <laughs> uh... Zach, did you have a guess or your hand just still? Oh, nope. Just to have him put my hand down. Hold on. For three points under frightening and intense scenes, the villain claimed the hero as an unholy demon and plans to send it back to hell where it belongs. Oh, oh, I got this. Josh says he got it. I think this counts as a proper noun. We'll see. All right. What do you think, Josh? You said send it back to hell, right? Uh-huh. A kid in King Arthur's court. <laughs> it is not a kid in King Arthur's court. Mm, could have been. <laughs> Sounded like it. The... For yes. two points, under alcohol, drugs, and smoking, a gargoyle smokes a sausage like a cigar. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Hold oh. on. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Zach, what do you think? I think it's uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Josh, what do you think? I also will say that one with the French it, name. It, it is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. <coughs> a man's lust for a woman is a large theme in this movie. Uh, it is the, the horniest villain in a Disney movie. 
Uh, speaking of, uh, last clue under six at nudity, during a musical number entitled Hellfire, he sees a curvaceous apparition of a woman and sings, quote, the fire in my skin, this burning desire ter is turning me to sin. And he states, be mine or you will burn. <laughs> cool. No, uh, no content warnings <laughs> for uh, slurs against the Romani people in that one? <laughs> I mean, those might be in there. I only chose five, and I tend to not want to say slurs on this show. Fair enough. <laughs> I've never seen the the movie. I know it's a cartoon. I think we still have uh, coffee shops with uh, that slur in their name. So We sure do. Uh, <laughs> do we? I think we're uh, not there yet. <laughs> Mike is at 10. Zach has moved up to one point. Casey and Josh tied at negative one each. Casey, we're going to move back to you. Would you like a movie from 1961, 2004, Whoa. or 2010? Uh, 2010. 2010. 2010. Okay, from 2010 for five points under sex and nudity. This is the exact quote I copy and pasted from IMDb. Uh. This refers to the unrated version because this is what I watched. And of course the R-rated would be a little less sexual content. Not that much of a difference. The unrated version is supposed to be funnier, not with more sexual content. Mm. Huh. For four is that points what under what the rating is for is, is uh -huh. how funny the movie is. <laughs> yeah, if it's unrated, it means it's unrated because it's un it's it's funny. If critics tried to watch, if the if the MPA did try to watch it, they would just die of laughter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for four points under alcohol, drugs, and smoking, drugs and drug use are a big part of the film, including abuse, smuggling, and adverse effects, all played for laughs. No, no, that's not a place, you fucking moron. <laughs> for three points under sex and nudity, a music video for a song about enjoying anal sex is shown. Oh, slow down now. Hold up. Hold up again. <laughs> <A music> <laughs> you heard him, Case. <laughs> a I just wanted to repeat yep. it. <laughs> uh, sure thing. A music video up for a song about enjoying anal sex is shown. No, that's not a place. Yeah, I had... Oh, wait. There's uh, so many things. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to say it. Oh, boy. Okay. Mike, what are you going to say? Is it Get Him to the Greek? It is the name of the theater. This is uh, Get Him to uh, the uh, Greek. <laughs> never seen it. I saw it once, I think. The movie's fine. The music is great. Oh. Including that song, it's Roseburn. I think it's like Ring Around My Rosie. Uh, just about, just about butt fucking. What's that? Uh, other other clues under sex and nudity. One of the main characters is a songwriter who works for Puff Daddy in the movie, and he sings about some suggestive stuff, mostly PG thirteen slash TV fourteen, and profanity. Russell Brand to his dad, quote, "You old cunt." <laughs> Not like a Tenacious D movie. The way I was hearing the first few comments on that. Like, this is a black movie of some kind. Uh, Mike has moved up to 13. Zach at one. Casey and Josh at negative one. Uh, Good. Josh, we're back to you. Good. Great. Do you like a movie? No. Okay, cool. From 19. 89, 1995, or 2012? 2012. 2012. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah. From 2012 for five points, under alcohol, drugs, and smoking, the main character takes prescription pills, implied painkillers. Oh, what year is a this? different year now. 2012. Okay. Say that one more time. The main character takes prescription pills, implied painkillers. 
for four points under sex and nudity. A woman gives a man a straight razor shave, adding to the experience touches of sensuality in the way she touches his face. The next day, they exchange a sexually charged double entendre or two. He can briefly be seen attempting to open her dress. What was the first clue? Main character takes prescription pills. Thank you. That's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely not that. (laughs) For three points under frightening and intense scenes, a man opens his mouth and shows that all but two teeth in his upper jaw and his entire left jawbone are fake. It gives him quite a frightening and disturbing appearance. I know what this is. Casey has a guess. Anybody else? No. What do you think, Casey? Skyfall. Name of Bond's childhood home. This is Skyfall. Uh, Skyfall. Also, just credit credit to Adele for putting the word Skyfall into a pop song and making it work. Yeah. Not since uh, Carly Simon finding a way to throw in the spy who loved me into a song <laughs> as a hit title yeah. felt clunkier. <laughs> uh, also in Skyfall. I just watched the other day, by the way, the spy who loved me. You're so spy who loved me. <laughs> you probably think the spy who loved me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Alcohol, oh, drugs, and smoking. The hero accept his, accepts his trademark vodka martini, which he deems perfect. And violence and gore, Bond wrestles a gun off one of Silva's men and shoots the ice they are standing on into freezing cold water. Bond then strangles him underwater by getting him into a headlock with his leg. Mike oh, Sillers in the spoilers in the parental advisory. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You've had 10 years. <laughs> oh, yeah, now. But, but back then, what if Also, I not. I, I feel like uh, Bond movies don't rely heavily on not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> My favorite one is the one where he dies at the end. Yeah, just to say, That's no time movie. to die, but he found time, didn't he? Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the one movie where he definitely didn't have time. That's why it's three hours long. <laughs> Uh, Mike is still at 13. Casey has moved into second place with two points. Zach at <laughs> one. Josh at negative one. Good. You know what, Nick? Good. <laughs> uh, Mike, would you like a movie from 1995, 2013, or 2022? I will take 1995. 1995. Yeah, you will, champ. 1995 for five points under violence and gore. A man fights the main character, punching and kicking him repeatedly. He is unharmed and throws the man onto the floor, and a woman slaps him a few times. Josh, what do you think this movie is? Sandlot. It is not the Sandlot. What year is this? 95. No, when they go, when they go to get the... When they go to get the ball back, and then in the I house do have to all, go to the next clue, Zach. Okay. Those things happen that right. you said in mm-hmm. Sandlot. For four points under violence and gore, many dead bodies are seen on a ship. Some are disemboweled. Some have their throats ripped open. Ooh. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Sure. I know that funny. also happens in the Sandlot, but it's still not the Sandlot. <laughs> all this right, one, Josh. I what do you guess think this that... time? This happened on a ship, Bismarck. It's not Bismarck, and I'm not positive that's a movie. It is. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take your word for it. Okay. About the battleship. For, <laughs> for three points under violence not, and gore, a guy decomposes throughout the movie. He loses his ear, hand, etc. Ninety-five. Ninety-five. Decomposes oh, slowly. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Mike, what do you think? Vampire in Brooklyn. Underrated as both an Eddie Murphy and a Wes Craven movie. It's Vampire in Brooklyn. Oh. oh. Talked about that one earlier, too, with my rhythm. <laughs> it feels, it feels hey, good. I'm, I don't even know some of these. 
You don't know Vampire in Brooklyn? No. It's fun. Like Vampire in Brooklyn rules, yeah. <laughs> it's fun, but... Well, I really thought that was yeah. earlier than but 95. Yeah. Five minutes. The joke's over in about ten minutes with that. It's, it's true. <laughs> But also, John Witherspoon is amazing. I mean, he's amazing in everything. But... He's good, yeah. Uh, also, in this movie, under violence and gore, several folks are bitten on the neck. No blood. And profanity, since this is a 90s Eddie Murphy movie. Plenty of X F bombs You know, that would have done it for me. I would have done it. <laughs> well, Mike has moved up to 16. Casey at 2. Zach at 1. Josh at negative 3. Just call it a night. <laughs> uh, is there like a little league rule here where we're getting yeah. To- <laughs> yeah, really. What's the, what's the parents the, what's are getting like, cold. They want to go home. Once he's ahead yeah. of 40, we have to add the you know. I mean, we still have 25 points on the board. All right, come on. Let's go. All right. All right. All right. Zach, yes. would you like a movie from 1975, 2001, or 2014? Which one do I know? That's a very good question. Right, I'll do. I'll that. do. I'll do. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Hmm. Uh, hmm. All right. Twenty fourteen for five points under violence and gore. One unfortunate is thrown into the side rotors of a small plane, making both the man and the plane explode. 2014? Yep. That is unfortunate. Yeah. That is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you described that one unfortunate. Like, yeah. Zach, what do you think? Is it uh, Pacific Rim? Josh, what do you think? Munich. <laughs> it is not Pacific Rim. It is not Munich. For four points under sex and nudity, at one point, two characters kiss in order to avoid being detected by bad guys. Afterward, the woman teases the man about it, asking if it was his first kiss in years. I'll guess. Okay, what are you going to guess this time, Josh? Well, it's off by a, is it, let's see, I think, let's see. Hold on, wait a minute. I think. Uh huh. Was. Wow, what apartment was I at when that? Darjeeling Express came out well before that. So that's my guess. It is not the Darjeeling Express or Limited. I know. <laughs> Thank you that's for clearing okay. that one off the table in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, for three points under violence and gore, a cyborg assassin throws a man out of a car and at a moving truck. It is heavily implied that he was killed by the truck. Sounds like a Twilight movie. For two points under violence and gore, there's a shootout on a bridge in which there is lots of mayhem and a few explosions. Two super soldiers get into an intense hand-to-hand combat fight, and a woman gets shot in the shoulder. We later see blood coming out of the wound. No. I see Probably Josh not. and Mike. Now I just see Zach and Mike, and now I just see Zach and Josh. <laughs> Josh, what do you think? The fight at the old bridge. Perfect. Zach, what do you think? Don't know. What is movie. it Guardians of the Galaxy? It is not Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, just so we're clear, it's not the fight at the old bridge. No. Final clue under violence and gore. The hero tangles with dozens of bad guys. Some he mows down in quick succession, taking them out with the fling of his shield, which we see strike with painful realism, or pushing them off the ship decks to fall into the ocean. Others take much more effort, and fights can be filled with punches, kicks, flying leaps, and knockout smacks. He suffers more than bumps and bruises, too. He's repeatedly shocked with strange taser-like devices, shot several times, stabbed in the shoulder, and outright brutalized on one hand one hard to watch showdown. 
All right, I just see Zach and Josh. We're gonna hate ourselves. Please. Does it make Zach? Sense. What do you think? It, it's uh, Captain America, the uh, uh, Winter Soldier. Josh, what do you think? I'll just say Captain America. Who cares? Life has no meaning. They go hang out. All right. Well, that's not the subtitle of it. It is Captain America, the Winter Soldier. That's fine. The so, place, yeah. on the a place question, there being a question America. that I got right, I, I netted negative one. America. Shit. You sure did. <laughs> America is for now a place. That is a place. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a vibe. America's a vibe, right? Uh, Mike's up to 16. America, a place for Americans. Zach is at, uh, nope, Casey's at two. Zach is at zero. Josh is at negative seven. We are nearing the end of this game. Four movies remain. One more for each of you. Casey, would you like a movie from? 1993, 1996, or 2012? Uh, 2012. 2012. All right, from 2012. <laughs> uh, for five points under frightening and intense scenes. The film contain scenes of people having fun, which may offend other people that don't have fun. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like like one of those, like, oh, I guess people were triggered by my racist comments. Uh-huh. <laughs> so this one's got to be Munich. Uh, is that your guess? That is. It's got to be Munich. It is not Munich. Good. Hmm. For four points under sex and nudity, a young man kisses an 18-year-old teenage girl. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Young man is doing a lot of work there. It sure is. <laughs> Josh, what do you think? Uh, Munich Winter Soldier. <laughs> it's not Munich Winter Soldier either. Captain Munich? <laughs> For sounds three like points. Captain Munich. <laughs> Under profanity, the movie is around a drug named literally "holy fucking shit." Oh, no, that's uh, that's um. What year is this? Twenty twelve. No. What's that clue again? It doesn't make the sense. movie is around a drug named literally "holy fucking shit." For two points under sex and nudity, a police officer threateningly asks a drug dealer if he wants him to beat his penis off. The drug dealer misinterprets and another police officer clarifies what the first one meant was that he will punch the drug dealer oh, so shit. many times in the genital area that your oh, shit. is going to fall off. Oh, I know what this is now. Oh, fuck. Uh, that's not going to come to me. Who gives a shit? All right. For one point under alcohol, drugs, and smoking, two undercover police officers throw a party for underage teens with several kegs of beer and dozens of bottles of hard liquor as well as a pound of marijuana taken from the police evidence room. We also see a pound of cocaine briefly. We see about 50 teens drinking hard liquor and beer from bottles and kegs and some teens smoking marijuana as they party and buying HFS. All right, I guess it's just Josh and Zach again. Josh, what do you think? Is this 21 Jump Street? Zach, what do you think? I believe it is 21 Jump Street. This is 21 Jump Street. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a movie I saw also. <laughs> oh my. I think it was actually kind of funny, right? I really like both of these movies. Yeah, I think these are actually good. I've only seen it the one time, but I remember it being <laughs> remarkably funny. Uh, Mike, still at 16. Casey's still at 2. Zach is up to 1. Josh at negative 8. No. 
still 15 points on the board, but I feel like uh, the scores are almost done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh, would you like a movie from 1973, 1993, or 2005? Let's see what that 93 is. 93. Nineteen ninety-three for five points under sex and nudity. Before they begin sex, the man's penis is seen briefly twice. If you blink, you might miss both times, but his penis and testicles are definitely visible for split seconds, <laughs> and his butt is seen. What is this? Nineteen ninety-three. Ninety-three. This is my parents giving me the sex talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach, what do you think? Uh, this is uh, White Palace. It is not White Palace. Ah. <laughs> For four points under violence and gore, Jessica Kimball accidentally impales a sheriff. You all know Jessica Kimball. Josh, what do you think? Bridges of Madison County. <laughs> Mike, what do you think? Kindergarten Cop. It is not Bridges of Madison County. It is not Kindergarten Cop. Ah, uh, good guess. Kind though. of a place. Yeah. Kind of a place. I know it's not Bridges of Madison County. I think I know what it is, but I can't think of it because fried green tomatoes isn't a place. <laughs> For three points under I'm violence shocked. and gore, the goriest of the original series... The gore in this film definitely has an edge over the Paramount entries. What is it? Huh. <laughs> All right, Josh, what do you think? Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, go home, kids. You're drunk. Mike, what do you think? Village of the Damned? It is not Village of the Damned. It okay. is not... Nightmare on Elm Street, go home, you're drunk. Kids. Kids. I'm sorry, it's not that one either. For two points under alcohol, drugs, and smoking, Jason Voorhees kills three teenagers are heard, <laughs> who are heard talking about smoking dope. Yeah, it took about 10 seconds to get it out there. <laughs> but I thought about... I don't know why I didn't just chime in before. Like, like I have something to lose. All right. Casey, I'm going to go to you first. What do you think? Uh, uh, is it J Jason Voorhees is the, um, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, massacre guy, right? I mean, are you are you answering or are you asking questions? <laughs> All right, I'm not. As, I'm gonna. I'm disqualified with us. I don't know. I don't remember what okay. he is. He's the Chainsaw Massacre guy? Is that what he is? Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre guy, right? Do you want Texas Chainsaw Massacre to be your guess, or do you guess. not want to guess? A fucking answer. All right, Josh. What do you think? <laughs> Muppets take Manhattan, Nick. Perfect guess. Mike, what do you think? Uh, Friday, oh, the 13th, Friday the 13th. Right? Jason but takes the Manhattan. Case. Zach, what do you think? <laughs> Friday the 13th, Jason and the Muppets take Manhattan. <laughs> nah, just Jason. Uh, it is oh, not wow. the Muppets take Manhattan. It's also not Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's also not Friday the 13th, Jason takes Manhattan. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you all. It's not. Final clue for one point under violence and gore. Sorry, my thing froze. Oh. A man bludgeons Voorhees with a shovel, and then Kimball impales Voorhees with a knife, and demons reach from beneath the soil to pull him into hell. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Zach, what do you want to guess? It's it's Friday the 13th, Jason goes to hell. Mike, what do you think? Friday the 13th, Jason goes to hell. Josh, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> it is Jason goes to hell the final Friday. Oh. Wow. 
I'm going to give you, you should, all points for you that. You should take away points. We don't. That's okay. We got it wrong. Yeah, take it. We, no, we I already, I already feel bad about all of you falling for exactly what I was trying to get to happen. <laughs> well, you. Uh, yeah, in, in this. You don't title, know that he went to the proper hell. Uh, I mean, he's literally being dragged to hell at the end. Yeah, but it, it could be an improper <laughs> hell. It could be a lowercase h hell. Yeah, but the title has an uppercase. That all titles have uppercases. <laughs> I've been waiting for an argument, and I finally got one. I was wondering how to hell. He just goes uh, to hell. Mike is at thirteen. Casey's at one. Zach is at zero. Josh is at negative ten. Does he go to hell, Norway? That's a town. <laughs> uh, Mike. Would you like a movie from 1961, 1989, or 2013? Let's do 1989. 1989. Yeah. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Good. Good word association. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we know Josh hates word association. I don't like any associations, really. <laughs> uh, there it is. Except for sports teams, right. huh? I love sports. Pen, penultimate movie of the night from 1989 for five points under violence and gore. The villain is very funny. Okay for underage. Down to nine years, audiences. <laughs> that was the a nine years underage. audience. What was that? The villain is underage? Yep. Is no, the, villain is, the villain is very funny. Okay for underage, down to nine years, audiences. <laughs> what year? Uh, uh, 1989. Oh, 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 I love this. Uh, I'll take, uh, no, wait, no, that's not a, yeah. never mind. For, for four points wait. under violence, oh, you want to guess? Yeah, no, that's not a, that probably doesn't count. All right, for four points under violence and gore, the villain uses wine to mutilate his arm. Then exclaims, quote, bad year, Dan. <laughs> no, it's not the rescuers down under, is it? <laughs> <laughs> For three points under violence and gore, a young man is sucked into a comic book where he is transformed into a piece of paper that the oh. villain rips to shreds. Wow. But after that, the young man is still alive. Oh, fuck. Mike has a guess. Anybody else? What do you think, Mike? The gate? It is not the gate. <sighs> That's a place. Oh, fuck. I know what this is. What is For this? two points under frightening and intense scenes, the scene where the child gets claws is funny. <laughs> under frightening and intense scenes, <laughs> the scene where the child gets claws is funny. <laughs> So, I'm uh, All right, for one point under violence and gore, the souls of Freddy's victims in the forms of their faces attached to his body by a slimy cord tear through his chest and pull a baby version of him out of his body through his chest. Not graphic or gory, very funny. I don't know the name of it. Of it. Yeah, I'm going to have to be lenient with what answers I accept for this one. Uh, it's a, uh, Casey, what do you think? It's a Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't know which, which one it is. But it's a Nightmare on Elm Street. Mike, what do you think? I'm going to go with Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Zach, what do you think? Um, uh, Nightmare on Elm N Nightmare in the general sort of area of Elm Street <laughs> uh, I'm going to go four Elm Street adjacent Yeah. Uh, well like I said I'm going to be real lenient since none of you got the title or the number I'm going to give it to all three of you uh. Uh, it's Nightmare on Elm Street 5 The Dream Child uh, uh, didn't expect anybody to get this of course it this was. Uh, this has been on the list since we, uh, since I was trying to put together, uh, uh, it was a bad movies list, and this has like a two out of ten on uh, IMDb. 
Oh. But uh, I don't expect anybody to know what the what the Nightmare on Elm Streets are. Well, one movie remains that we're going to do for fun. All right. Mike's at 13. I Casey's like to at have two. fun, Nick. Zach's at one. Josh is at negative 10. Oh. Uh, Zach, you get to pick this last movie. Would you like a movie from 1961, 1975, or 2022? Let's go 61. 61. Raising the stakes. (laughs) (laughs) Final movie of the night from 1961 for five points under alcohol, drugs, and smoking. A man is drinking in, and smoking in his bed along with a woman doing that too. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Josh? Along the waterfront. It is not along the waterfront. The waterfront. There was a luxury <laughs> condominium. They had those then, Nick. <laughs> Shut up. For four points under sex and nudity, there's a scene with a strip tease. A woman's back is shown, and she does unclip her bra, but no breasts are shown. Fucking haze code, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> For three points under violence and gore, a woman has an uncontrollable hysterical reaction to very bad news. She destroys her apartment and throws her cat against the wall. In a second emotional scene, she sends the cat in off in the, the rain alone. She sends the cat off in the rain alone. She sucks. <laughs> oh, oh, I have a guess. <laughs> All right, Josh, what do you think? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Zach, what do you think? It's Breakfast at Tiffany's. This movie is Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah. Tiffany's, the location, the store. I think I remember the film. I mean, I, I, I recall very little about it, but it was okay. I, I recall, I think we both kind of liked it. Yeah, <laughs> one thing we got. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, well, let's just wrap this up. The final clues of that also one. on that one was there any was there any content warning about the a- a racist anti Asian imagery? I will say that that <laughs> yeah, is one. listed under frightening and intense scenes, but I didn't include it in the game because uh, it just sucks. <laughs> it's like a perfect movie until Mickey Rooney shows up. Sure is. is. Uh, oh, under boy. sex and nudity, implied throughout in, is the fact that both main characters use their sexuality as a source of income. In the woman's case, she is a glamorous escort, though there's never a mention of her actually having sex with any of her customers, whom she calls rats and super rats. The man is a kept <laughs> sexual companion of a wealthy woman. Yes. And alcohol, drugs, and smoking characters drink and smoke in scene after scene. Consumption of alcohol is a primary activity of the players. There's one lengthy party where everyone is shown to be drinking heavily and many people are very drunk. Holly Go Lightly plays one lengthy scene completely inebriated. Her long cigarette that holder is played drunk. as part of her wild girl character. Oh, wait, wild girl. Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> that Good was Casey. Breakfast at Tiffany's. This was Inappropriate Movie Database. Our final scores tonight. Josh have to say it. moved up to negative eight. Ugh. Casey at two, Zach at four, Mike just completely running away with this game at 13 points, making Mike the winner tonight. Woo! Yay, Mike, you suck. <laughs> Thank yeah. you all, all for doing this. I know that there were uh, some real, real tough movies on this list tonight, uh, but I finally got to use them because I found such a broad category. Uh, this was so much fun. Before we go, if there's anything you want to promote, anywhere you want to be found, or just any last words. Zach, I'll start with you. Uh, you can check out uh, Left Night with Kendra Dossie on Wednesdays on 2MP Studios. 
you can also, if you're if you're somebody uh, who likes uh, wrestling or likes to hear people talk about wrestling, I have a podcast called Podcast Dark Elevation, and also you can follow me at Dark Elevation, uh, where we review uh, content that is specifically made for YouTube uh, <laughs> if, by a, a million dollar like? company. Oh, What's okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, oh, perfect. Your voice went out. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't hear you at all. Zach Jones, everybody. <laughs> Zach Jones, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, well, he figures that out. Josh, is there anything you want to say? Yeah, I just, uh, I just sabotaged Zach Jones, and uh, <laughs> so I can talk. No, um, Did I cut uh, out entirely? Ah, uh, now you're back. Yeah. Uh, just in time to. Yeah. Hold on, I just want to I want to say the thing I said. If 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 there's a community fridge in your neighborhood, it's very hot out. Put some put some drinks in the community fridge so that your neighbors have something to to drink if they're if they're out on the streets. Hell yeah, Josh, do better than that. If it's really hot out, uh, go find your community fridge and take a drink out of there. <laughs> That's also how it works. <laughs> um, probably Zach Jones put it in there. So it'll probably be pretty good. Um, oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Um, if you're inclined to go see a, stra- a strange uh, basement comedy show that has been o- away for almost three years that nobody asked for it to come back, well, guess what? <laughs> uh, Friday, August 19th, Oh God No comes back in some form. Uh, it has some members left. One of them original. Uh, so it'll be fun. Uh, if you want to go see some weird sketch comedy, uh, DM me. It's in a basement. I can't say it here. Uh, perfect. Uh, Josh, we gotta talk before that happens. Maybe we should like do a show with with all of you, uh, one of these. If if no, anybody great. else in Oh God No wants to do it. Yeah, I mean it's really just me and Dan, so we'll see. Oh, it's just you and Dan. All right, yep. great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you want to dig your own grave and just book Dan and I for this show, go for it. But <laughs> that show will probably never end. Uh. Casey, do you have anything you want to tell the people? Uh, you can follow me on all the interwebs at Casey's Comedy. Uh, I'll be in the Portland Comedy Festival uh, 25th to the 28th of this month, August. That's Fuck it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank yeah, you really. so much for doing this, though. You were great. Oh, pressure. Uh, finally, our winner, Mike, do you have anything? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not performing anywhere uh, yet, uh, but I may soon. Who knows? Uh, but in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Air Giordano, uh, like it says right here, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think people can see that. <laughs> yeah. uh, wonderful. Thank you all for doing this. You were all great. Once again, Casey McNeil, Josh Pick, Mike Giordano, Zach Jones. I'm Nick Martucci. You can find me on all social media at Blundering Idiom. Find the show on Facebook, search Inappropriate Movie Database, or click the link in the description of this video, Twitter and Instagram at IMDB Game. Uh, we do this show two times a week, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to keep doing it until, I don't know, I get a cease and desist from IMDB or something. Uh, this has been so <laughs> fun to do. If you want to be a part of it, I would love to have you on. Like I said at the beginning of the show, Go to any of these, uh, these these social media places and sign up there. Uh, find a date that works for you. I would love to have you on. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Like, subscribe, do YouTuber stuff.